Hey there crafty friends, it's Tina from the Scrap and Rabbit blog and today I have this cute little mermaid card to share with you and I made it using alcohol inks and I did Copic coloring and so I'm going to go ahead and show you how I created this card as well as share some other mermaid cards that I created in hopes to send some out to some of you. First off, I'm going to be using this Stamp Anything Yupo paper that she has available in the shop and the links will be in the description box below. These alcohol inks that I'm using, I got at a local craft store called Scrapbooking Made Simple. I don't believe that they have them in the shop anymore, but I think I paid like a dollar for each one, which was such a great deal, which got me going in trying to use these inks. So basically all I do is I put the drops down and I play with it and I play with it until I find a pattern that works for me. And since I'm going for the under the sea, I am using this dark blue, a purple, an aqua color, and a light blue, as well as the blending solution. And it always looks like a hot mess when you get started, but it does look very cool. I am blowing on it. I don't have a straw. I've seen other people use straws. I just always seem to forget to bring one for my craft room so I blow on it to get some of the liquid flowing and I just work with it and work with it until I feel like I've created something that I want to use on a card so I'm trying to get as close to the edge as possible so that I have lots of choices and where I want to use my panel that I'm going to put on my card and so I don't mind that it's going to goop up a little bit, but when it gets a little too thick, I will use this wet white to just dab, dab a little bit of, it, bit of it off. You do want those puddles though, because that is where the foil is going to stick. So it'll stick around the rims of those puddles. So I'm just playing with it, moving things around, and until I feel like it, and it looks like nice swirly Ocean, And so these were my go-to colors for this particular scene and I had gotten a few requests that people wanted to know how I made these backgrounds and so that's why I'm making this video. I continue to add more of the blending solution and more colors and again it's just what you like, what appeals to your eyes and so I work with it until I feel like I have a nice blend of colors and the alcohol inks, they are so fun to work with. So I'll keep on blowing on it and I'll keep on adding more and more color because I'm looking to get a deep color since it is the under the sea. And right now I'm using a an isopropyl alcohol that I bought at Target and, I'm, and a paintbrush and I'm just spritzing it on there with uh, and it makes these really cool looking bubbles and I like the effect especially for an under the water scene. I'm diluting that center dark spot with some of the um, solution, the blending solution to kind of lighten it up a little bit. And I'm kind of playing with it a lot because <laughs> that's just what I do. But I do like, um, I am going for a darker color and I am trying to uh, make it look nice and oceany. And so, and I'm thinking about where it's, getting a little bit tacky as to how the foil will stick to those little sections. So I'll dab up where it's a little bit too much and then I'll leave where I think it's just right. And then eventually it'll be time to uh, do the, the foil. I'm just adding a little bit more ink just to bring my color all the way to the edges of the paper to give me more areas to choose for my die cut. So after about 10 minutes, I'm using this holographic foil that is just so, so pretty. And all I'm doing is burnishing it over the top of my alcohol ink paper. And this is one that I've used before on my cards. And so that's why you see that it's missing some of the foil. But that's the great thing about it is the foil can last you a long time. When you're doing a project like this, you can reuse this foil over and over and over until there isn't any left. And so just by rubbing it on there, it adheres to the panel and it just makes for some sparkly yumminess and it makes a great, great ocean background. So now this is the stamp that I'm going to be working with. It is the Stamp Anything We Mermaid to be friends. And I went ahead and stamped it along with the little coral piece onto some Hammer Mill 110 pound card stock using some My Favorite Things Extreme Black Ink. And then I'm going to go ahead and color 
this cutie up with Copic markers. I have the colors that I use listed on the top left of the screen. I do start off with my lightest color just to wet up the paper a little bit and then I bring in the color towards the face. I'll go in with my medium tone, the E11, to give a little bit of shadow around the hair, and then I'll blend it out with the E00 and then the E000. For the darkest color, I'll go in with the E04 to bring a little bit more of that shadow right under the hairline, and then I'll blend it out just a bit with the E11, and then I'll bring that color forward using the E00 and I brush that, I just kind of bring it towards the center again of the, of the face so that I have the dark around the edges and then coming towards the center and with the lightest color in the middle. So I blend it out with the E000 and then go in around the eyes just to kind of give it a little bit of a roundness there and then I blend it out in the center with my very lightest color, the E0000. So now I'm going in for that double layer because I do do two layers when I color with the hair as well as the skin tones. And so I'm just basically repeating the process, going dark to light and bringing that area, blending it towards the center of the face. There are lots of colors that you can use to do this. This is kind of one of my favorite combinations that I've come up with for these faces since the faces are pretty large and trying to get an even blend is not always the easiest, but that's the beauty of it. When you color with these Stamp Anything stamps, you have lots of room to just play and explore and experiment to see what you like. And so that's basically what I do. I did add the rosy cheeks using the R21 and blended it out with the R20 and then I basically move on down to the neck and to the arms and then her little belly there and for these smaller areas I'm going to go just dark to light and blend that out and of course I will do a second layer of that as well. That does help. I think it makes the color pop a little bit more and it makes your blending a lot more smooth as well doing that second layer coming across. And so once I have her arms done and her little neck and her little tummy done and I have it all blended out with that second layer, it'll be time to move on and start working on her hair. Before we get to the hair though, I want to go in and double up that layer on the cheeks and then I'm also going to finish her face by coloring her tongue. So using the R21 and the R20 and then blending out with the E000. Now it's time to move on to the tongue. I'm going to be using the R17, the R14, and the R12. And I'm just going to do a layer of each and then that is going to complete the tongue. Moving on to the hair, I'm going to use the E50 just to mark out my light portions of the hair. I tend to color too far in with the darker colors and so it helps me to just reserve those areas for the light parts of the hair. And you don't really see the E50 at the end, but it's just kind of a marker for me so that I can leave the, those lighter portions. So with that, I'm gonna go in with my lightest color, which is the E23. And then that is going to help me mark off um, or it's gonna go right up against that E50. So then once I do that, I'm gonna go in from dark to light, the E59 being the darkest, and that's where I'm gonna go with just little touches of the darkness because I want the hair to be more of a light brown and not a dark brown. So I'm gonna do just around the edges with that E59. And then I will go in to blend that out with the E27 to bring that color in towards the center of that highlighted area and just kind of stretch that color out. Once I blend out all of those dark areas with the E25, I'm going to take my, um, I'm sorry, the E27, I'm going to take the E25 as the next color to blend the E27 towards the center of the highlight. 
and then going around it helps me to turn the paper around and around which is why I do that that way I can keep my strokes basically in one direction and so I continue blending towards the center and then once I have that E25 down I will use the E23 to go again into the center towards that E50 that I laid down and trying not to cover that area up leaving that to be the lightest area of the hair and I will go in there and do a second layer of that and basically go from the dark to light but I've been having problems with my camera so I, it's cut out for some reason so now it's time to move on to the tail and I'm going to go dark to light with my darkest color being the BG09 and I'm going across the bottom of the tail just to kind of give it a little bit of an outline and then I will blend it out using the BG05 and finally the BG53 I'll finish up the tail by coloring that top part around her waist and then it's going to be time to work on the her little top and so I am using the purples are the V17 and then a Spectrum Noir HB3. I really love that color, although I'm not really fond of the Spectrum Noir markers. And then the lightest color being the BV01 to blend it through. I do like to use this Memento ink pen to go over the eyes when I don't do the heat embossing and then that helps the eyes stand out a little bit more and then I'm going to add some little white um, dots in her eyes all to make her come alive moving on to that little coral that I stamped I'm using the R35 the R32 and the lightest color being the R30 and then that is going to be the colors that I use for that. I'll add a, some little dots on there with my darkest Copic and that gives it a little bit of texture. And so once I have that down, I'm feeling like I want to put in one more layer of color and blend it out just a little bit more and add some more of those dots to give that coral a little bit of life. And then once I have that done, it'll be time to fussy cut out my images. And I'm going to create a little rock for her to sit on just out of some gray cardstock and some distress inks. And then I'm going to use some Copic Gray W markers to just add a few dots to give it some texture. And then she'll have her rock to sit on. I have my A2. Uh, card base and then I cut out this dark purple panel at layering panel and then I also cut out my alcohol ink panel with uh, card mat dies from Jaded Blossom and so those will be the layers for my card base I'm really happy with how that background turned out and now I'm just going to arrange how I want my little mermaid to sit I found this sentiment waving hello from another mermaid stamp set and I'm just gonna prep this little banner so that I can stamp and heat emboss that uh, sentiment so I'm gonna pop that on my little block and using some Versamark I'm gonna stamp waving hello along with some white uh, embossing powder from Lawn Fawn and then I'm gonna go ahead and heat emboss that and then the banners on a little on the long side so I am going to once I get that uh, white powder wiped off I'm going to trim it and put it just to where I feel like it should go on my card base I'm going to use some liquid glue to adhere my panels and then once I have that attached to my card base I'll go ahead and add my little mermaid and the rock and the coral so the rock I'm just going to liquid glue right on the panel as well as the little coral but for the sentiment and the mermaid I'm gonna pop those up using some foam adhesive double-sided foam tape and I'll use several pieces to get along the back side of my little mermaid girl because I don't want her to bend in any way if she gets sent through the mail and so I'll go ahead and pop her up there and pop the sentiment on across towards the top 
panel of the card. And then now I'm going to decorate the inside of the card, cutting out this wave with the leftover alcohol ink paper. And I thought that that would look really cool at the bot as a bottom strip along the inside of my card base. I usually don't share how I decorate the inside, but I've been asked about that as well. So I'm going to try to start including that in my videos as well. And then for the inside sentiment, we were made to be friends. I'm going to use some Versifying ink and I'm just going to go ahead and stamp it. I'm not going to heat emboss it though because I don't want my cardstock to warp since I do have that panel glued to the bottom. I'm pulling out some uh, white, uh, sequ actually some clear silver sequins from Pretty Pink Posh and I'm just going to add some dots of glue and just randomly place them on my card base to be little bubbles and I'll add one to the little banner at the top. I'm going to add some sparkle using a Spectrum Noir Sparkle Marker, a metallic silver to draw that line on her top, and some Nouveau Glitter Marker, marker in like a greenish aqua color just to add to her fin. So here's a look at the finished card. I hope you guys enjoyed this process video with me playing with these alcohol inks and putting it together into a nice summery ocean under the sea type of card. And that is Maui making all kinds of little chirping noises from her cage. She does that when she hears me talk. She thinks I'm talking to her. But I also wanted to share with you guys, I have been so busy this last year and I really kind of stepped away from doing a lot of swapping and mailing things. And look at all of these cards that I have accumulated over this past year and a half or so. These are all mermaid cards that I have made on my for my design team projects, as well as some under the sea themed related little jellyfish types of cards. But I have just so many cards and I'm hoping that I can send some of these out. So if you are interested in receiving a card, please leave a comment below. I will do a uh, random pick. I'm not sure how many people will comment. I don't know how many of you are hanging on to the end of this video. I don't know how many I'll end up giving away or mailing out. But if you are interested in me sending you one, please go ahead and leave a comment. And I thank you so much for watching. I really hope that you enjoyed this video. Please give it a thumbs up. And uh, as always, I love reading your comments. So thanks again, everyone. I hope you have a wonderful day. Until next time, happy crafting. Mm -hmm.